Virginia 5 is probably one of the most unique vessels on the west coast of the United States. It is an absolute living museum. Every time we take the ship out, we truly do turn another page of Northwest history. The Virginia 5 is the last remaining wooden steamship, passenger, propeller-driven vessel of its kind in the Western United States. It's very unique. It's an important part of Puget Sound maritime history. There's just something weird and satisfying about being on a 100-foot-long antique, just screaming down the waterways. Sort of an awe-inspiring experience of just, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Virginia 5 is a National Historic Landmark. It is one of only two vessels of its type still in operation in the continental United States. That is a wooden hull, propeller-driven steamship. It's probably one of the very few places in the country where you can actually see a working steamboat in operation, and it's just a heck of a lot of fun to take out. Probably the most interesting feature of the Virginia 5 is the reciprocating steam engine, which is in back of me. There are very few steam-powered vessels, period, in the United States, and even fewer with reciprocating engines, probably only half a dozen. There were just hundreds of these boats, and there was one... We're you know, very proud of the Virginia 5 as the last of the steam-powered Mosquito fleet, which is absolutely and historically correct but really her significance far exceeds what that regional status alone uh, tells you because well over 100 years time from the early 1800s up until the 1930s, all over coastal United States there were ships like this that performed in a trade exactly like this. But there are only two out of thousands that remain as living ships and this is one of them. Virginia 5 is the sole representative now of the Mosquito Fleet, which was once mass transportation on Puget Sound before there was roads and automobiles everywhere. And we need to keep something around to remind us of that. It was a different way of life, more leisurely way of life than we have now. The people in Seattle and Tacoma needed to move product or people between the various cities. So what these boats did, they were called the Mosquito Fleet. Some guy looked out on Elliott Bay about 1880 and said they looked like a bunch of mosquitoes out there, so therefore it was called the Mosquito Fleet. This is one of the small boats. It's 125 feet. These vessels went up to over 300 feet. They had accommodations to sleep in. They were well appointed. They were beautiful inside. They did a great job. Well, we often say that the Virginia 5 was built to connect Tacoma and Seattle, and that's correct, but really the importance of the Virginia 5 was to connect the uh, small communities of the west side of Vashon Island with the endpoint cities. To understand the significance of the Virginia 5, I think it's worthwhile to take yourself back in time. If you grew up on an island like Vashon Island in a little community there, who's primary communication with the rest of the world was by way of steamboat and get some idea of what that was like. Those little communities with steamboat wars, those wars were like the small town train station inland anywhere else in America that was your connection with the world. So for example, if you were a husband and father, you may have worked at one of the sawmills or the shingle mills for your work week that might have been six days or longer and, and lived in a, as a boarder someone's home or a boarding house in Seattle or Tacoma or other places and then came home when you had the opportunity on the island and so you would go and you make that commute on a ship like this. 
If you were a wife and a mother raising a family in that situation, maybe you had hens or berry patches to augment the family income, if you had those products had to get to market, they would go on the decks of a ship like this. Maybe you wanted to get some new kitchenware or splurge on a new set of dishes. You didn't go online to Amazon.com to order something or hop in the car and go to the local discount department store. You got it from the Sears catalog. And that order was filled in the, uh, the big warehouse building in Soto where Starbucks is now. When that came by mail, it came on the decks of a ship like this. Nels Christensen was the starter of the West Pass Transportation Company. He lived on the west side of Vashon Island, which is called Kovos Passage, also known as West Pass. And he wanted to find a reliable way of getting farmers with their produce from Tacoma to Seattle and service the, the towns on Vashon Island and the Kitsap Peninsula. The Christensen family owned West Pass, and they started out with one little tiny boat, the Virginia One. They bought succeedingly larger vessels, uh, two, three, four, for the run on the west side of Ashon and the east side of the Kitsap Peninsula from Tacoma to Seattle. Virginia Five was built by a Norwegian shipbuilder. It was built on a beach without plans. It was the first one built by the West Pass Transportation Company from scratch. The ship was built on a beach in Colbos Passage in a town called Maplewood, just a little south of Olala. The town doesn't exist anymore, and the spot that, um, that she was built on is just really just a beach. Across the Colbos Passage from what is now Lisa Beulah Park in Vashon. The boat is from Liza Beulah, Washington. That's where she's home ported out of. Liza Beulah was a postal drop box and then became an actual post office. And the reason it was called Liza Beulah, Liza and Beulah were the two women who ran the post office. So the mailman, in keeping things simple, he called it Liza Beulah, Washington. Ships have always been christened by, you know, a beautiful woman smashing a bottle of champagne against the bow of the ship. But that didn't happen on this, on this ship. Uh, the Virginia Five was christened with spring water because it was christened at a time during Prohibition. So that was a unique little tidbit about the ship. The engine, it's a triple expansion, double action, reciprocating steam engine. And it was state-of-the-art engine technology in the 1800s. The engine was casted in 1898 and it was assembled in 1904. This engine was originally installed in the uh, Virginia 4, originally it's called the Tyrus. And it was taken out of the 4 and reinstalled in the Virginia 5 in 1921. And the ship was launched in 1922. So the engine is quite a bit older than the ship is. The engine was built at a small machine shop down here on the Seattle waterfront, Heffernan Engine Works, and it was a handmade engine when it was built, and it's still like that. Right off. It's a triple expansion engine because the high pressure steam is expanded in stages to lower pressures in larger cylinders and continues to do work in the engine before it exhausts into the condenser. The concept was invented about 1880 to enable steamships to compete with sailing ships at sea and burn less fuel than they had been burning before with more primitive, low-pressure engines. It's a pretty happy little engine. Beautiful <laughs> piece of technology. Incredibly hypnotizing. You go and look at it for a long time. Almost every voyage, one person comes down here and then spends the entire voyage just looking at it. You know, everyone's just enthralled by this engine, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. So it's magical to a lot of people, including us. The 
one thing about the Virginia 5 which is completely different than any other boat you will be on is that we have absolutely no control over the engine from the wheelhouse. The only thing that we can do is turn right and left. We use the engine order telegraph right behind me to signal down to the chief engineer who then has to change the speed of, or direction of the engine. When I started as a fireman on board in 1966, she steered with manila rope and there was no power steering at all. So was the Virginia 5 upper body workout. That's right. Also, she didn't have a telegraph in those days. She had a gong and jingle, the bell pulls on the wheel stand. So if you're stopped while one bell is half a head or two bells is half a stern, the jingle is full. You know, jingle one bell is uh, slow ahead or jingle in two bells is slow astern. And that's how we did it, and that's how most of these uh, passenger steamers operated. And then we have our two whistles pull cords here. The red one is for our two whistles that are on the smokestack back here. And those steam horns are tuned to a particular sound, and people would know which boat was coming in and what time that boat would be at the dock, give or take a few minutes, and what time that boat would leave for sure, give or take a few minutes. I'll never forget the whistle. And even today, to hear that whistle in the distance, I mean, I was out in my backyard and I heard it and it's like a dog hearing its master's voice. I just immediately perked up and I thought, that's the Virginia V. And I just literally ran down the hill to watch it come in. That sound of the whistle, you know, I would recognize it anywhere. There was a big storm in 1934, and that storm almost did the ship in. The ship was returning to dock at the ferry landing at Alala. A bad storm kicked up, and Captain Christensen needed to disembark his passengers. He docked the ship successfully, and everyone got off, and then the storm got worse and worse and just battered the ship against the dock. I mean, the entire cabin, the entire house, and everything was crumpled and crushed on the starboard side. And that alone was, was almost enough to do in the Virginia Five. They were able to rebuild it, but that storm almost ruined it. By the late 1930s, all of the New Deal programs had built roads and more people had cars and trucks and it was more efficient to move your cargo by truck than it was to use a ship. So the ship had to find other ways to survive. World War II, it was drafted to haul shipyard workers from Seattle to Bremerton. Uh, that was one of its very busy times. By that time, much of the Mosquito Fleet had worn out and disappeared and been decommissioned. So the Virginia Five was one of the few available resources to get people around Puget Sound. And one of the things that it did to support itself was haul campfire girls to the camp on Vashon Island from either Seattle or Tacoma. About a million campfire girls went to camp on the Virginia Five. I was aboard the Virginia Five starting when I was about eight years old, going to Camp Seals, and it was just magic. You waited all year for this adventure to get on the Virginia V and to go over to Camp Seals. I marked the days off the calendar, and finally the day came. And the boat, when we were small, looked huge. I mean, it looked it immense, and it, it doesn't look that big today. <laughs> Starting out at Fisherman's Terminal, mm -hmm. that would be an exciting day. You were going to go to camp, and I was a city girl and not around boats. So we went to Fisherman's Terminal and had our suitcases and a big, heavy flannel sleeping bag. And finally, it was time to get on the boat. And once you did that, you were in a different world. Your mom would go get in her car and race over to the locks and by the time the boat got there all the mothers were uh, leaning over the locks. 
Sometimes a seven and eight year old, we'd think we were sinking in the, in the locks because all of a sudden you were at this level and all of a sudden you started going down. The counselors would reassure you that you weren't sinking, that this is what happened when you went through the locks. We welcome you to Camp CF, we're mighty glad you're here. We'll send the air reverberating with a mighty cheer. We'll sing you in, we'll sing you out. And they'd start right away the minute you got on board with singing songs and taking care of the kids that so maybe got a little homesick. But why would anybody get homesick when they were on such a fantastic adventure? So come on and join us, for we are never blue. Be a member of our happy laughing crew, you too. Virginia 5 is one of the sole remaining ships of its type, so it's, it's pretty great that we've been able to save this one. And it took a lot of dedication. And it actually went down and worked on the Columbia River for a couple of years as an evening excursion dinner cruiser and was brought back to uh, Seattle by some of the dignitaries around here who wanted to save the ship. Iver Hagland of Ivers Restaurants was one of those people. By the mid-90s, the ship was very worn down. And with the 1996 inspection from the Coast Guard, they said, you need to put in a new boiler. Well, in order to put in a new boiler, the ship basically had to be dismantled. This necessitated a huge rebuilding project. In 1996 and 1998, the good people of Seattle came up with almost $8 million to rebuild the five from the water line up. And from what you can see from the water line on up, most of the wood was replaced. The ship was at Lake Union Dry Dock from 1997 till 2001. The majority of the ship was rebuilt and refurbished at that time. And when you're working on a ship like the Virginia 5, it requires a certain level of skill that is kind of going away. We had to find shipwrights that are able to handle planks that are 20, 30, 40, 50 feet long. So it was one of the most unique restorations in the Pacific Northwest. And we've gone to great lengths to keep it as exactly original as we could. If you were to take a walk on board the ship in 1922 and here, in 2012, the ship would look pretty darn identical to the way it did back in 1922. And when we took her out of the shipyard, she was, and still is, the queen of the Northwest as far as I'm concerned. Currently what we do is we do quite a bit of weddings. I have just completed doing my 128th wedding on board and we do corporate charters. We do about 12 public charters every year. We do opening day of yachting season, Blue Angels during the Seafair Festival. We'll do Christmas cruises. We always take the ship out for special people's cruise every Christmas and it's just a fun thing to do. I've got the best hobby job in the entire world. I've got the biggest toy. I've already won. That's so cool! What's exciting to me is when the ship comes alive. When we fire the boiler off and we start to develop steam pressure and everything starts to work. When the ship is waking up and becoming alive. Every time I participate in that, it's just a thrill. The Virginia Five Foundation and all of its participants, we're all volunteers. We all volunteer because we have a passion for the ship and we want to participate in the ship so that the Virginia Five will live on. Yeah. Okay, so are we ready to light off? We gotta put the igniter in. The skill set required, especially in the engineering, is a disappearing art completely. There are no more steamships pretty much in the U.S. To learn from or retire from. Gary Frankel, I can remember sailing with him years ago. Most of our engineers are retired in their 60s and 70s. So when they decide not to come down and it's not fun anymore, that lost art will be gone. And there's a good question as to whether there will be anybody to operate this vessel. 
The good news is that this vessel has a lot of people on board that care very passionately for this boat. And we are getting a lot more interest from younger generations that are coming on board and just finding this to be the coolest thing they've ever seen. And we'll start picking up new generations of people to take over and we'll train them up and let them go with it. I hope that young guys take an interest in the boat and replace us and then keep up the work of keeping her up. There will always be shipyard, there will always be wood to rebuild the ship from, and it just takes money and gumption and dedication. This is probably my fourth time on the Virginia Five. And what I liked most about this was just the history that's being preserved with this ship. I mean, steam power itself was one of the things that built this country. And having something that's a working 100-year-old plus steam engine on the Virginia Five is absolutely mind-blowing to me. Well, I hope that we can keep her in operation because that's what really distinguishes her from any other maritime historical artifact is that she's still a living ship. And, uh, that's extraordinary. And with the help of our volunteers and our donors, we aspire to maintain her as long as we can. We know there's a lot of people that love this boat and have put in many, many hours to keep it happy. And it's gonna last a long time. I mean, I would not be surprised that in a hundred years or more, you'll still see this engine, you'll still see this boat in some way or another, just traveling around. It was classy when it was built. Classy now, we're gonna stay that way.